Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over a possible snow event in parts of the Rockies and the Central Plains. We're also going to have some colder temperatures for much of the east uh, following this system, so we're also going to be briefly covering that. We're going to be going over a couple things including the snowfall maps, uh, not my personal forecast but just the model forecast maps in today's video, as well as some of the upper air maps which should give us a good idea of what's actually uh, happening within the system. So there's a few things that we still have to kind of look over we're not 100% on this storm and there are still two different solutions to what could happen with this system and again we're going to review both of them so let's start off with our weather photo of the day this was sent in by Isaac C uh, and he took a picture of some cirrus clouds which were uh, over uh, over parts of the Tennessee Valley that's where he lives I'm not going to say exactly where but he lives in the Tennessee Valley and it was mainly caused by uh, the jet stream and some strong low lower level winds so the interaction between both of them caused so this cool cloud formation which you see in the sky right here uh, and again he does live in the Tennessee Valley and this is what the jet stream looked like around the time of this photo uh, and you can see that we had a strong southerly jet into much of the Tennessee Valley and parts of the southeast uh, that was allowing some of these very cool uh, kind of longer type of clouds to develop so definitely a great photo here from Isaac C thank you for sending that in if you guys have any other photos that you want to send in related to the weather, uh, then feel free to do so. We've been getting a couple recently, so it's always great to get your photos. And if you ever get, especially any snowfall, any ice, uh, if you have some cool fall foliage photos, anything like that, uh, or even just a cool cloud photo like today's photo, weather photo of the day was, uh, then of course just feel free to send that in. And I'll feature it in the beginning uh, of the video. Also, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below in the comments section. Uh, and again, my email address is at the bottom of the of the screen and also in the description down below. So that's how you can contact me if you want to send in one of these weather photos. Now, let's take a look at what the current National Weather Service page looks like. You can see that we have some frost advisories and freeze warnings for parts of Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, and Missouri. Uh, and then again, we have those freeze warnings for a little bit of Kansas and northwestern Missouri. Yesterday, uh, we had, actually before we get to that, uh, we do also have some flood watches up in parts of the northeast. So that includes parts of Maryland, D.C., Delaware, uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, uh, even into parts of New York, Ohio, uh, Michigan, and even through a little bit of Maine as well. We also have some scattered wind advisories throughout uh, the country in a couple of patches here and there. So uh, yesterday we had a high temperature of 96 degrees tied between Chino, California, Anaheim, California, and Mecca, California. All of them got up to 96 yesterday. The low temperature was 5 degrees in Berthood Pass, Colorado, and the highest rainfall report was in Crossroads, Mississippi, right on the border there with Louisiana, where they got 4.66 inches of rain. Uh, the snowfall report yesterday was 2 miles north of Cook City, Montana, where they got 7 inches of snowfall. And it looks like that same part of the country will also be getting a little bit more snowfall, and really the main question is how far south will that snow get? So let's start off with what the European model is showing, just to give you one idea of what may happen. Now this is similar to what the European and the Canadian are showing, and some of the other European-based models, uh, what they're uh, basically showing. So uh, you can see that we do have a little bit of snow up for parts of uh, Wyoming and Nebraska. This is not your main event, but this is going to kind of linger here over the next few days. So right now this is Sunday morning, here's Sunday evening, you can see it moves a little bit further to the south but generally it'll stay over that same area you'll have a mix of rain and snow through Monday morning but nothing that's really going to be too solid so you'll really be flipping in and out of those uh, snow and rain bands uh, I also do want to point out that because we will be having some strong westerly and northwesterly winds, you may get a little bit of uh, snow to blow off from some of these lakes in parts of Saskatchewan, Manitoba, uh, Minnesota, even some of the Great Lakes as well. So you might even see some of your first flakes of the season in some parts of northern Minnesota, Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan. Uh, that's definitely a possibility 
for Monday into Tuesday. Now for Tuesday morning, you can see that we still have some rain for the plains, but some parts of Colorado and Wyoming are dealing with a little bit of snowfall. Now this is where the GFS and the European model really differ. We see that with the GFS, we, we basically just get this initial wave of lighter snowfall and rainfall that moves to the east and you have pretty much no support from behind. In this case, the European does bring in some of that support and we actually get a revitalized system uh, that brings in even more precipitation in the form of snow and rain. So moving this on, this is what the European does. It brings in a lot more snowfall by the time that we hit Tuesday night. So we're looking at Wyoming, Colorado, and even a little bit of Kansas, Nebraska possibly getting in on that snowfall. Now, I don't think this is the most likely solution, uh, but I will still show it just for the sake of giving you another opinion on what may happen. I'm thinking that I'll either have my snowfall forecast out tomorrow, and that's only, I'll only have it out if the models are starting to agree. But if there's still not a lot of agreement within these models, I may hold off until Sunday or Monday to make that snowfall forecast just because this can really go either way and there can be a big difference between one model or another and you're going to see that when we look at the snowfall maps uh, towards the end half of today's video so Here's Wednesday morning. Uh, the snow is still piling up in Kansas, Colorado, Wyoming, uh, even a little bit of Utah and Nebraska. And then that slides to the south with light to moderate snowfall uh, on the northern end of that system. So here's what the European model does with the total snowfall. Now, I'm not really too concerned with the total amount. Uh, one thing that you will have to kind of consider is that you will also have to deal with how much is actually going to accumulate. Now, you can look at these maps all you want, but it's not really going to give you a great idea of just how much is going to fall. Because, uh, for example, you can see how this entire area is covered with gray. So, seemingly, this entire spot should be dealing with some snowfall. And even if the European model is 100% correct, most of that is not going to stick. Probably uh, almost all of it, unless you get uh, basically southwest of this line or once you get back about northeast of this line uh, this middle spot probably is not going to deal with too much accumulating snowfall and the reason is because the European model and every other model for the most part does not take into effect uh, how uh, warm the ground temperature is it does not consider that at all so this is not an accumulation map this is a total snowfall map if everything was perfect and if you were basically having this accumulate on a completely white surface where the sun was being reflected and it's just based on the snowfall rates which we of course know is not the case you're having most of this accumulate on grassy surfaces or in fields or on the top of your car so these are all different surfaces that will have diff different accumulation levels now, I'm thinking that for a lot of these areas, especially once you get east of the Rockies, uh, the accumulation numbers will probably be on the lower side, especially as you get into eastern Colorado, southern Nebraska, and western Kansas. Uh, and I think you're probably going to want to cut these numbers in half. So you can see that 10 inch number printed right here. Maybe you only get 5 inches, even if the European model is 100% correct, because it will be tough to fight off uh, the warmer uh, nature of having this snowfall in early November. Uh, maybe in January, this wouldn't really be an issue. Maybe you would get that full 10 inches, but now, now that it's still late October, maybe early November, you still need to deal with the fact that not all of that is really going to accumulate. So again, I'm thinking take half of uh, that amount of whatever amount you have printed. If you live basically southeast of this area, so if you live in that area, take about half of that amount. Uh, if you live in this yellow region, I would say probably take around three quarters of the amount that you see given. I don't think you'll have too much uh, problems with accumulation. And then once you get northwest of this line, you probably won't have too much uh, difficulty with having that stick to the ground. So that's kind of a, just a good idea and a good thing to pay attention to. Uh, I I know personally from experience with some of these snowstorms, you really need to get that first initial inch of snowfall and then everything on top of that is much easier to accumulate. Uh, that's one of the things that you'll see. If you're dealing with a snowstorm where you're 33, 34 degrees, uh, you'll definitely notice that you, you wait maybe 30 or 45 minutes, especially on those borderline snowstorms where it might be snowing, uh, but it's maybe th still 34 degrees and you still need to wait for 
the ground temperatures also cool down so it might be snowing for again 30 45 maybe even an hour uh, and you still don't have anything on the ground and then all of a sudden everything starts to accumulate and that's because once you get at that initial layer of snowfall the color of the snow which is white that reflects sunlight so black absorbs uh, sunlight so that's why black cars usually are a lot warmer in the summer but the color white does reflect the sunlight back so uh, once you get some of the snow to actually stick once you get that initial layer on the grass or the wood or whatever surface then you can start to get a lot more of that accumulation now here's a similar model uh, and here's the Canadian so this is the Canadian model showing similar numbers uh, overall for these areas now the numbers are not exactly the same it shows this snow getting a little bit further southeast for my liking. I don't think this is going to be exactly what ends up happening. It is a possibility though, so we can't rule it out. But I really don't think this is going to be 100% accurate. But it is similar to what the European model is showing. They're both taking a similar track. Now, here's what the GFS shows. And you can see why I'm hesitating on making a snowfall forecast. Because when you have a model so different compared to another model, it really does put some doubt in your mind in terms of what's actually going to happen. Now, I do agree with the GFS that I don't think this is going to be a massive snow snowstorm with 12-inch uh, amounts in Kansas. I really don't think it's going to be that high, but I also kind of disagree with the GFS. I don't think it'll be this minuscule. I still think that areas, let's say, further to the south and to Colorado will get some snowfall. I think this area will be filled in with some snowfall. Uh, my main question is how much accumulation over this area right here this is where I'm really having difficulty pinpointing this but you can see the GFS has a little stripe of one to three inches again not all of that is accum accumulating so I would say probably more like one to two inches over most of those spots and a similar model to that would be the North American model the NAM 12 km model which uh, also shows about two to five inches of snowfall but again when you're taking into account how much will actually stick it's more like one to four inches of snow uh, so these are both North American based models. Uh, the Canadian model, even though it is based out of Canada, which of course is in uh, North America, it is more similar with the way that it uh, inputs the data to the European models like the icon model uh, the European model the UK met model so it's a lot more similar to those ones so I kind of lump it in with the European based models so I think the again there's definitely a big difference between the American and the North American based models and these European styled uh, computer models there's really a big discrepancy in how they're interpreting this data uh, where you're seeing the North American ones really just showing that initial wave of snowfall but nothing really coming in afterwards and then you have the European based ones uh, that are bringing in that initial wave having it linger and then get picked up by a smaller trough which then brings in more snowfall so those are two completely different setups and they would have two completely different outcomes depending on which one actually occurs here's the upper air map just to give you a good idea of what's happening here's your source of cold air right here and this is uh why it's so cold or compared to normal uh in parts of the eastern united states not only for today uh where it is fairly chilly over some of these areas but uh, also for the next few days so uh, this is Halloween uh, so October 31st Sunday when this uh, when this frame would be valid for uh, and this is off the European model and you can see it has a big trough uh, into the northern plains and a general area of lower pressure all across the eastern United States uh, and then you have even more troughing in the west so overall a fairly chilly pattern for these spots now if we look at the actual upper air jet stream it does show you an interesting picture with how everything is interacting with each other you have this source of cold air coming in straight from uh, northern and central Canada then moving uh, across the Midwest like this so you're getting picked up by the North American jet stream and that is pushing it uh, further to the east so this is your cold air starting up from Canada and ending up all the way uh, in the United States now we also see this little trough here uh, or this little area of weaker winds and that is indicating your trough and your storm uh, across the Rockies so this is the European model reinforcing uh, that system so you by this point would already have that snowfall somewhat starting uh, in parts of Nebraska Colorado Wyoming and then you would get this re resurgence 
and this next wave so you would have this wave and then you would have another one which would move in off the coast of Oregon California Washington uh, that would move inland and then eventually into the Rockies and that would provide another wave of extra moisture to the system so there's a few different things interacting right here uh, and one of the things that might help it strengthen is the fact that you have a strong high pressure system uh, looming down on the uh, from the north and that's allowing some strengthening because you do have a big difference in pressure you have a big pressure gradient over this area between relatively low pressures and relatively high pressures to the north so this little area in between might have a little bit more strengthening and you do see that sometimes uh, where you do have some of that uh, strengthening between high and low pressures uh, especially with hurricanes you can see that a lot but it also does happen sometimes with these snowstorms so that is going to wrap it up for today's video uh, this was a definitely a fun one to look at and I will be tracking it over the next few days even if I don't make a video on it tomorrow which I think I probably will make a video on it tomorrow but even if I don't I will still definitely be keeping an eye on it I'm leaning towards not making my snowfall forecast tomorrow for the system just because again it is really tough to get a good idea of what's actually going to happen with the system we really are uncertain on the track of this not really the track but also just how many waves of re of moisture are we going to get from this are we just going to have that one wave that moves in and out or are we going to get maybe two three four waves of uh resurgence from this system so that's something that we have to really pay attention to and i think that should be resolved by sunday but again no guarantees so i'm really hoping that the models get it together and that i'm able to to make a forecast on the snowfall by Sunday but again no guarantees just because I don't want to make a forecast that's overly uh, looking too far out and then eventually becoming uh, pretty much useless because it, it's incorrect but I also don't want to leave some of these people hanging that do want some snowfall forecast because they live in that area so I'm trying to balance the two things uh, again that is going to wrap it up if you have any questions or comments just leave them down below and I'll be giving out some uh, forecast even if you're not involved with this system in, in general if you just want a, a quick few day forecast for uh, your uh, area just leave your location and then I'll put in a forecast uh, within the next I would say 12 to 18 hours of you put uh, putting that comment up so again that is gonna wrap it up and I'll see you guys tomorrow goodbye